Welcome to my zone online school. My name is teacher Mutsa. Get your education booklet in our daily newspaper, street sales, or at your school every Monday to Thursday for pre-primary up until grade three. The lessons are for listening or watching online. Inside the newspapers, there's an insert of the lesson booklet. Please cut the top of the lesson booklet with a pair of scissors and fold it for ready to use. But there is more. We are also available on our online platforms, MyZone and Zoshi Facebook pages, and in addition, our website, Zoshi Online. to my zone online school my name is teacher Mutsa and thank you so much for joining me today our theme this week is local media and money with saving and before we get into any lessons boys and girls we need to sanitize so let us take our sanitizer and sing our special sanitizing song Sanitize every day so the germs can stay away. Sanitize every day so the germs can stay away. Yay! Good job, everyone! For today's lesson, we will be talking about mass conjunctions and the number 11. Now for our lesson, boys and girls, I'd like us to turn to page 12. On page 12, we are going to be doing mass. Now when we say mass, we are talking about how heavy something is or how light something is. So we have three things that we need to compare and then it's asking whether or not it is heavy or light. But before we do anything for this exercise, let's find out what we actually mean by heavy and what we mean by light. So when we say the word heavy, we are saying the hardest thing to lift up. Now we can be lifting up with our hands or something else, but normally we'll be using our hands. Let's take a look at the sweet jar. The sweet jar is very heavy to lift up because the material used is something that will make it nice and thick. So the sweet jar is heavy. But if I compare the sweet jar to the stick of glue, I know that this is heavier than the stick of glue. Now, if I have the sweet jar, the stick of glue, and my ruler, I have three things to compare it with. I can say that the sweet jar is the heaviest one to lift up. So remember, the heaviest means it's the hardest one to lift up. If I lift up the ruler, it's not hard to lift up. If I lift up the glue, it is not hard to lift up. But if I lift up the sweet jar, that's when I can feel the difference. And that's when I can say this is the heaviest thing or item. Now the word lightest is the easiest thing to lift up. So we are going to compare the same things. I'm going to start with the ruler. As you can see, the ruler is very easy for me to lift up. And then I have the glue, which is easy. 
easy but not as easy as the ruler. And then I have the sweet jar which is still a little bit heavy to lift up. So I can't say this is easiest to lift up. I also cannot say that this is the lightest thing because when I lift up the ruler, I can tell that it is much easier to lift up the ruler than it is to lift up the glue. So, now that we know the difference and we're talking about mass, let's now try and do number one together. Number one has a screwdriver, a paper clip and a hammer. And it's our job to circle the heaviest one. Now, if we talk about a screwdriver, it usually just falls in the hand and it's not that heavy. So it is not the heaviest one to lift up. And a paper clip is very, very small, boys and girls. So small that it's able to put my papers together and it weighs very, very little. But a hammer is a tool that is very heavy because it is used to make sure that nails go down into the ground or on the wall. And for that to happen, the hammer needs to have a lot of weight to push the nail down. So I can circle the hammer and then I can say that the hammer is the heaviest. So. Look carefully for these words, heaviest and lightest. When they're talking about the lightest, they're talking about the one that is easiest to lift up. Take your time with this one. Don't forget to circle clearly because not all of them are saying heaviest. And I'll see you soon after the advert break. Follow us on My Zone Facebook, Active Kids, to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. Now, boys and girls, let's all go to page 13. On page 13, we are going to be doing conjunctions. Now, we already talked about conjunctions. We said a conjunction is a word that is used to join two sentences to make one sentence. Before we use our conjunction, we are being asked to first rewrite the sentences. And before you actually rewrite, you need to read. So, let us read the sentences. The first one says, let's read together. She has a chicken. She has a chicken. The second sentence says, she has a turkey. She has a turkey. Now, these are our two sentences that we have to rewrite. So, I'm going to help you rewrite the first one. So, let's take a look at the board. The first one says, like we said before, she has a chicken. When you're rewriting your sentence, you start with a capital letter, S. So, we're going to put our S. And I want you to follow me as you're writing it down. We have our s. Then we need to put the rest of the word to make the word complete. She. Then I make sure that I have enough space in between and I start my next word. The next word is the word has. Please shape your letters nicely, boys and girls and write neatly. Very good. Now I have she has. The next one that I want to put is a. So I make a space using my fingers and then I write the word a. Good. Now we have she has a. The next one that we're going to write is the word chicken. 
So I'll make my space with my fingers. And then I'm going to write my word chicken. Now, as you are writing, please make sure that your letters are well shaped and that you are writing very neatly with good spacing in between. So now I've written my word chicken, but I'm not yet done. I need to put a full stop to end my sentence. And there we have it. We have rewritten the sentence. So now you know that every time they say rewrite, they want you to take the same sentence and write it on the space that they have given you. Now the next thing they're asking you to do is to use the conjunction. The example that they have given you is the example of and. So you're going to use and to join the two sentences together to make one sentence. So we are going to say she has a chicken. But there's also the words she has a turkey. Instead of us having our full stop, we're going to remove it. And then after that, we're going to continue by adding our conjunction. In this case, the conjunction they have given us is the word and. So we are writing the word and. Now we can say she has a chicken. And then instead of saying again, she has a we're going to say and a turkey because we already have she has. So we're going to write the next part of the sentence and write and a turkey. There we go. And now we have used our conjunction to join two sentences and make it one. Our sentence now says, she has a chicken and a turkey. So boys and girls, please write neatly when you're rewriting your sentences. Don't forget your capital letters and your full stop. And when you're using your conjunction, put it in between the two sentences to join them together so they can become one. Have fun with your conjunctions and I'll see you soon after the advert break. Do you have children in the age range of five to six years and want to participate in our school booklet program? Please contact us on 081 and we will put you on our distribution list for the attention of pre-primary schools. Topics include family, summer, culture, traditions and houses, transport and communications, occupations, autumn and more. We distribute countrywide in over seven different languages. For our last exercise today, boys and girls, let's all turn to page 14. On page 14, we are going to be doing the number 11. Now the number 11 is made up of two digits, a one and another one. So we are going to be coloring in the number 11. Then after that, we are going to make dots in the die that add up to 11. After that, we're going to look for the word 11 and circle it on the number words we can see. Then you are going to trace and write the number 11 as well as trace and write the name 11. So we're going to do all of those ones together. Let's take a look. Now we already know what the number 11 looks like. We said that it is two digits, a one and a one, and together they make the number 11. So we're going to write our number 11 simply by going down. 
and then we go down again starting from the top line going to the bottom line that is the number 11 let's try it again down very good and then we leave a space a little bit and go down again remember the number 11 starts on the top line and goes to the bottom line cutting through the dotted line so now that we know how to write the number 11 we need to write the name 11 so just like on this flashcard we have written 11 and now we are going to write 11 so let us take a look at how it looks like we are going to start with a big letter or capital letter E. So that's where we will begin. We will have our capital letter E. But for you, we are going to make it a small letter E. So we're going to start small letter E. We go down, round and flick. Making sure that we are under our dotted line. And then we start have a L, starting from the top line, going to the bottom. Then we have another E and a V, all under the dotted line. Then we have another E and then we have the last letter N. Now we have written our number 11. So I'd like you to please practice it. Take your time and make sure that when you're tracing it, you're following the trace lines. The other thing they've asked us to do is to draw 11 dots. So that is what we're going to do. In our die, we're going to do 11 dots. We're going to start by drawing 5 in this one and then 6 in the next one. So let's start. You can use a red color. I'm using my red chalk. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to put six in the next one. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Now we need to count the dots to make sure that they are 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's count on 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there are 11 dots in our die. Well done. Now let's go to the very last part of our exercise. We are going to fill in the number before 11 and the number after 11. Now this means that we have to count. So let us start by counting together. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, if you were listening carefully, I got up to twelve. So that was your clue to say that the number after eleven is the number twelve. So you're going to write the number twelve on the line that is after the number 11. And then the number before 11 is the number 10. Let's check to see if our answers are correct. So we have 10, 11, 12. Yes, it is correct. We can also check with our number line, 10. 11, 12. So now we know it is correct. The rest of the exercise you're going to do by yourself. You are going to color 11 ladybugs and then you're going to color 11 blocks. 
it's going to need you to first count and then you color. So please, please, boys and girls, only count up to 11. Take your time, have fun, and I'll see you soon after the advert break. Follow us on MyZone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. We have now come to the end of our lesson, boys and girls, and I hope you had fun. I know I did. Remember, if you're not sure what to do or you don't know, that's okay. You can always ask for help. Just make sure you finish your work by yourself and then you continue to practice, practice, practice. Now that we are done with our lesson, it's time to sanitize. Remember, when we sanitize, we start by putting sanitizer in our hands. We rub inside, around our hands, very good, in between our fingers, on our wrists, and on our fingertips too. Make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else. If you don't have sanitizer, you can always use soap and water. Sashi was supposed to come and visit me, but I think he got stopped somewhere. Sashi? Oh! <laughs> there you are, Sashi. So, from Sashi and I, we would like to say thank you for joining us today and goodbye! <laughs>